Welcome to the Pricing for the Planet week. This is the end of day one. And it's kind of the cherry on the cake because we have, you know, such an expert on this topic that we are so happy to finish this first day with Mathilde. Mathilde, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you for having me. So, so Mathilde, uh, I will let you introduce yourself, but I'm super interested by, you know, what you are calling sustainable finance and the journey of Danone. But, you know, I don't want to give a spoiler, so maybe I will let you introduce yourself first. Okay, so Mathilde Rodier, I work in Danone. I'm in charge of two big topics in Danone. First one, I'm in charge of investor relations. And in addition, I'm in charge also of sustainable finance. Um, and, and I've been in Danone for four years now. And before that, my background was more in financial markets. Which actually maybe first, I, th I think your, your background is quite interesting because we have a lot of you know, people from, from the audience reaching out to us, asking you know, what is the best path to you know, work in sustainability. And some people think that, oh, I don't have a master in sustainability, so I cannot work in sustainability. I think you are the perfect example of like having a career and then branching out at some point towards sustainability. Can you share maybe a little bit more about your journey, your path to this, you know, great role at Danone? Yeah, I, I think, and I'm sure you've discussed that already in different uh, places, but it's true that those jobs around sustainability, there is a lot of them and a lot of new ones appear, and specifically in companies. Uh, I'm sure everyone can see that those uh, either department of specialists around sustainability are becoming more and more numerous in companies because there is more and more need for that. So there is people expert in sustainability per se, so the ones that are more maybe technical, the ones that are very strong experts in climate, in biodiversity, if any kind of uh, sustainability topics with maybe an engineer kind of profile and an expertise or knowing the regulations, uh, well, different uh, parts at stake for the company. There is the one more executing the sustainability, if I may call them like that, the one in the operation. I think, for example, for us in Danone, people leading with, with sourcing, so the one in charge of the relationship with the um, agricultures, uh, the one in charge of uh, dealing with the water impact on the on the production sites and stuff like that. So those ones are really like concretely living sustainability and making sure that uh, what we do uh, uh, is, um, is is well done and properly uh, operated uh, at their level. And then there is a uh, function which is sustainability finance where, where, where uh, I am now, which is more about how do you measure and make sure you understand exactly what we are doing there in sustainability. So at some point, uh, we, we want to make sure that the extra financial part of what we do can be uh, measured uh, and then also reported. So uh, I'm more on that part. So that doesn't mean we don't need the expertise. And in my team, there is a lot of uh, strong and solid experts on all those sustainability topics. I would say I have uh, among the, the biggest specialists in Danone on, uh, on those uh, different sustainability topics, but, uh, but, but mean that we also have this uh, role, which is about, again, making concrete uh, assessment of what does that mean, what we're doing, how do we measure that, which is really key for any company. And then... Uh, helping everyone to use this information uh, in the most um, efficient manner. So internally, so that because if you want to manage something, you need to measure it. Uh, and also externally for the different audience to understand and, and, and appreciate what we are doing from a sustainability um, point of view. So why did I came to this job from where I was, which was really a financial market, uh, investor relation, that world? Uh, I think it's... Uh, it's, it's mainly because this topic, sustainability, if I just take the word sustainability as a whole, appeared in financial market, I would say something like 15 years ago, maybe, if not much more than that, because also it was not like the first topic. Huh? Uh, investors, uh, analysts, financial markets, are, their job is about uh, investing and trying to generate um, uh, return in, uh, in investment uh, on the financial market huh, to be very basic on what they do. But then progressively, the approach around sustainability and the ability to integrate those topics in their way of thinking appears. And it's still at a moment where even now, 15 years later, everyone struggles to really understand how do you 
assess and integrate sustainability uh, angle in the process decision. Because again, uh, the investor's target is to invest in a way that will drive return uh, and, and not to push companies only to do what's good for the planet. So how do you deal with those two aspects? And so I think, and this is, I think, also the big topic of our uh, discussion today, I think the most appropriate way to do that is to help investors understand how sustainability is embedded and participating to the value creation uh, of the company they invest in. So they need to appreciate uh, this aspect, sustainability, as any kind of other aspect they would assess in a company when they would decide to invest or not. Not in a, not in a way just to push company to to, to, to um, commit to something, because this is not specifically, again, their role. Right? It's more like governments or laws and regulations, but more because as an investor, well, this is how they will participate. Um, and, and I think this, will, this is the most constructive way to get uh, investor uh, investors in, implied and, and, and participating to that. So I've been working a lot uh, on that topic with the sustainable uh, finance team. And so when the opportunity appeared for me to... Uh, to be also uh, managing that part in Danone, I, I really grabbed it because I thought it was making sense to manage both sides side, uh, together. That's super interesting. So if I understand well, behind sustainable finance, I mean, you are wearing a lot of caps. You are translating what's your, what you are doing internally into kind of like benefits for the investors, like short and long term. You are also taking care of all kind of like the reporting. Do you have CSRD or is it, you know, yeah. outside you have, you do have a, a CSRD. Yeah. Okay. The way we organize. So, so I think the first step, which is very important, I think uh, when we talk about sustainable finance is the measure, because again, and not just measuring us. Uh, so we, we call it sustainable finance, but it's not just finance. It's how do you measure any kind of metrics to help appreciate your extra financial performance? So how do you measure CO2? Uh, so GHG emissions, sorry. Um, how do you measure biodiversity impact, which is like a, a tough one because no one really knows for the moment exactly how do you measure biodiversity, but also you can know how do you measure water. We have in Danone a very important topic in terms of sustainability, which is the health impact. So how do you measure what we do and appreciate the trajectory we are covering here? So. And again, because I think the basic uh, starting point is to make sure you manage things properly and take the right direction with everyone behind you, you need measurement. You need to, uh, to, to have the tools to appreciate what you do. And this is the first step of what we're doing. And then the second would be, yes, the reporting part. So you were mentioning CSRD. CSRD, you know, it's uh, regulated. We, we have to comply with this. We, we're working hard on that uh, as any... Uh, um, company uh, actually uh, and uh, reporting is also like uh, the ratings uh, agencies but then also and again I think our role here is also to make sure taking into consideration be it CSRD being rating being any other angle um, how where we are here how do we make sure that people understand the trajectory we are uh, following how do we help them see what they should look uh, uh, to what they should look at to try to understand what we're doing and helping them for, because it's all about also there is a transparency aspect in CSRD, but also again here, uh, uh, a willingness to make things more, more uh, understandable for all the stakeholders. So clearly for us, it's uh, uh, the idea here is to give, um, make available to all the audience we have, all the stakeholders we have, uh, the different elements they need to appreciate the trajectory. So be it, uh, in, again, first, first audience would be internal that needs those elements and appreciation of what we're doing to decide and assess and uh, design a sustainability strategy put in place in the operation, research and innovation, etc. All, all the things that we've designed. But also, we need to make sure that we have the proper uh, tools and uh, articulation of what we're doing uh, to, uh, to for, for suppliers, for, for customers, for investors, for uh, NGOs that would like to appreciate the trajectory of the company. So any kind of stakeholder we have that would like to understand exactly what we do, what are the... And that's one of the aspects that is interesting in CSRD because it starts with assessing what's important for us. 
what's, what, what, what will have an impact for Danone. So this is the first responsibility we have in terms of explaining where we have an impact and how we are uh, managing uh, that impact. Great. And I think that's super important, the, the Danone case, because I think you, you started this transformation a while ago. I would say before most of you know the other companies can you share maybe you know very high level with the audience you know what danon did you know why what was kind of the journey what was the path around sustainability um well so anyone in danon will tell you it started as you said a long time ago for danon sustainability first uh, uh, the, the reference we have usually is 1972 when you have this discours de Marseille, so Marseille speech from uh, Antoine Ribou around the double uh, projects, what we call the double projects, so saying that uh, uh, a company needs to be uh, at the same time productive and performance, but also uh, take care of, uh, of the team. So the social aspect was, uh, and both of them needs to be considered at the same level. So that was quite new uh, at the time and, and, and is the first step of our journey. And since then, as you mentioned, we've always been in advance taking into consideration those different uh, environmental, social and governance topics. Uh, also because we are a company really um, uh, um, implied in those and, and concerned because everything we do is linked to uh, nature uh, environment. And again, we're uh, for, 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 for a very long time convinced on all the social implications that it can have in the company. I think um, in this journey, uh, an important step has been uh, not so far ago. And in fact, it was, was two years ago when we redefined the strategy of the company. So the strategy of Danone is called Renew Danone, was presented in March 2022. March 2022. Uh, at the same moment, uh, we redesigned also the sustainable uh, strategy. We called it the Danone Impact Journey. And again, with this idea of what is the impact of Danone, where do we have an impact, where should we have an impact, and how do we uh, manage those different topics. So we created this Danone Impact Journey around three big pillars, health, nature, and, uh, and social. And I think one of the important steps we made th there uh, and it, it's not like an easy one and it's an ongoing journey, but the idea is to make sure that we embed that strategy and that way of thinking within the global strategic company. It needs to be within it. It shouldn't be a part. It needs to be in, in the strategy you are designing, in the business strategy you design in terms of uh, what type of, where do I source, uh, to whom, uh, what do I produce as a product, to who I sell, where, etc. All those decisions have both a financial implication and a sustainable implication. And both needs to be taken into consideration because at the end, the sustainable impact of that decision will also have an impact on the, on the business one. So it, it's not the easiest one to put uh, the, together, and, but, but and we are coming back to the value creation aspect. Sustainability is not just like something apart. It needs to be embedded and appreciated from that, uh, that point of view. And we, um, we usually have uh, our CEO having a strong conviction that it expressed quite often in different uh, places when he has the opportunity to express uh, on that topic, which is about uh, the sentence, which is like sustainability without performance has no impact, but performance without sustainability has no future. And, and this is a sentence that helps us having a, like, this is the way of thinking. Again, not totally easy to embed because there is a lot of different elements that can um, make it a bit difficult. And again, I'm coming back on the role of sustainable finance. Uh, import, important role to play here because here we, we try to and we work on making things as concrete as possible to help uh, both uh, strategies to, to be embedded. Which is a perfect transition because, you know, like the entire week, the entire pricing for the Planet Week is really about, you know, like how to start and how you connect, you know, business with sustainability. Uh, and I think that's exactly what you are communicating. Like, you know, you need both, you know, you don't have to, you should not have silo like a sustainability team and a business team. And, you know, each of the team, they are doing their own thing. Do you see this, because we have this, you know, hypothesis saying, you know, like if, if you are good in sustainability, it's creating value. And it's creating, you know, business performance. Did you already experience that? Experience that at Danone? Um, 
we we have concrete examples that are already true for that. And the, the, the big thing I think, well, one of the big elements here is also the fact that it's not always exactly the same timeline between the business and the sustainability. Very often, people are not seeing so clearly the sustainability angle because it looks sometimes, it can look uh, like far away. And uh, while very often business decision and the way that you appreciate the performance from a business point of view can be something like two, three years, something like that. So I think one of the important steps in that is put in perspective. So always always helping people, getting a big picture and then coming back on the business. And then you embed again the sustainability topic on the more of a short-term part. So, so um, yes, we had already experienced that on, on different uh, on, on different. Alors there is different aspect there in terms of business implication for sustainability. There is a, a how this is participating to resilience. For example, for us, we have a big dependency. We, we are sourcing natural product and we are sourcing milk. Uh, different type of ingredients so we can like concretely understand when we discuss like that that if there is uh like degradation of condition linked to a global warming you can have difficulties to source so making sure that you secure your sourcing as an important element uh then there is license to operate also as an angle like making sure that with the evolution of uh, different regulations or different perspectives, you still have the possibility to operate in your business because you made the right decision at the right moment and soon enough. And there is also, and this is the point I think in terms of pricing, which is interesting, is it to make, to make it, I don't know if this is something that you can price per se, like I'm being sustainable, so it's a bit more expensive, but it's a competitive advantage. And we have this strong conviction. And, and, and this is where also you can create those conditions by communicating communication, obviously, and making sure that the proper elements are available to make sure everyone understands how you are different and what you're doing in terms of sustainability. So here again, we go on sustainable finance role in terms of uh, pointing what uh, the reality and measuring to make it uh, useful and usable for uh, for the team that would like to to make it visible for the, for the commercial teams. Um, and so this one is an important one. On, on the resilience part, we, we already had um, occasion to witness that at, at Danone. For example, if you take the um, uh, sourcing of milk in Morocco, where it's like the reality of global warming is uh, already there. And one of the big issues to get uh, productivity from the cow is their access to water. So the work we're doing in terms of uh, improving the access to water, working on a regenerative agriculture approach with the agriculture we work with in uh, in Morocco is clearly having a positive impact on our ability to uh, maintain the resilience of the business and make sure we have the proper sourcing with a proper quality of milk and continue to to to, to deliver the, uh, the 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 activities there. So this is for the resilience part. For the license to operate, I would say there is countries like been the case in the UK and also in Mexico around like the level of sugar you have in your product. So this is from the health part in sustainability. And clearly being able to deliver a product uh, with low level of sugar, but high quality in terms of taste and uh, texture, etc. It's not, it's not a given. It links to all the investment we've made in terms of research. Uh, and, and that uh, creates a condition where you can continue to sell your product in in in, in, in those countries, in fact, to sell them with a positive uh, um, positioning uh, in regard of those laws, uh, and sensing after for um, uh, competitiveness. We think that at some point, people should be able to uh, understand enough that between choices made by companies in terms of sustainability, the product they are buying at the end uh, are quite different. So. It's a, it's a long journey here again, a lot to do to, to make sure it's visible, well understood and valorized, but uh, this is what we are working on. Awesome. That, that sounds, you know, super cool. And, and uh, it, it really resonates when you are talking about, you know, sustainability, sustainability as a competitive advantage. You know, I think it was our, it was a title of our last year uh, annual summit at Schneider Electric with uh, BCG. Uh, you know, it was, you know, the, the big, the big thing. So I think that's that's such an important concept to, to grasp. Mathilde, you, so this week we are asking, you know, two big questions. Sustainability, what to do, where to start. What would be your answers? Uh, what to do, where to start? Um, you mean in terms of sustainability in a global way or what, what was the yeah. specific? Yeah, kind of what would be your advice for any company, you know, interested to start this journey? 
And I, I, I think if you want to achieve, uh, and I think this is what everyone should want to achieve, which is embed sustainability, you need to start by uh, very concretely making sure that everyone is, uh, in, is, is uh, uh, involved in, in the work you're doing to put in place sustainability and not just uh, a, a, a sustainability department assigned. This is how a lot of us started because it was the reality, because, because it was a new topic we didn't know exactly. So you had like a kind of separated department. And it, the reality is it is embedded everywhere. So it needs to be embedded everywhere. So everyone is concerned by this topic at all levels of the company. And, and again, there is, it creates new ways of thinking in the company from this story about, for example, time, timeline and, Time frame where we see it's different. So it's not the regular, it was not the regular way of thinking of companies until now. And so if you want to make sure you need to, 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 to embed everyone. So I think a, a good way to, to, to start is to make sure that it's not like anything you're going to decide, the targets you're going to set are not something done on top down, because otherwise uh, then you get the team not understanding. It looks like just an additional constraint yeah. and you will not embark people with you on that. They need to see that it's also a benefit for them. And it is the reality. So uh, to make sure they are seeing that, you need to embed them and spend enough time explaining how this is uh, participating to the global value creation uh, journey of the company. So I, I would start by that. And again, not the easiest part, but uh, making sure that everyone is uh, not a top-down kind of uh, uh, direction. Mathilde, th thank you so much. I, I think we're we are reaching the end of, of this uh, discussion. Where can the audience find more information about what you are doing, what Danone is doing? You know, how can they learn more about you and the work that Danone is doing? So I, I would go on the, on the website, danone.com. Uh, you'll find a lot of information. I think one of good ways so we you'll see there is information on this Danone impact journey I mentioned so you can see all the different targets we set there is also two like the integrated report that tries also to describe maybe a bit more like a, with a bit more material and and and, and wording around explaining the, the the different angle of Danone strategy be it voilà, the, the renewed Danone strategy embedding the Danone impact uh, impact journey and alors, of course as anyone you we will also have uh, the URD uh 2024 that's going to get out i think in april uh with the famous new chapter five so we're integrating the csrd so uh, a lot of information uh, available there uh but I, but but again i think the best way to appreciate and understand is to look at those tools those tools like rap, rap, integrated report and uh tell an impact journey uh, roadmap Amazing. Mathilde, again, thank you so much for, for sharing. That was super interesting. And, and, you know, from, from the audience and from myself, again, a huge thank you. Thank you. Bye.